Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Dorit Hoflite and look at her contributions to astronomy. So let's go ahead and get started here. And Dorit Hoflite was lived or sorry, lived from 1907 to 2007 and was born in Alabama. She actually started out studying mathematics and that's where she got her bachelor's degree and then would later receive her PhD from Radcliffe College in 1938. So what did she study? Well, a number of different things and a few things were working on different catalogs, including the Yale Bright Star Catalog, which catalogs 9000 stars of a brightness of about a magnitude of six and a half in brightness. Now, typically we refer to a magnitude six as stars that are visible to the naked eye. So that would be all stars visible to the naked eye and maybe even a little fainter in the sky. Now, of course, that's what you'd see in a, in a completely dark site in brighter areas, you would not be able to see near that many stars. And of course, half those stars are going to be below the horizon at any given time. Now, she also co authored the general catalog of trigonometric stellar parallaxes. What is that? Well, that's a catalog of stars that had had distances measured by trigonometric parallax. Trigonometric parallax is the only direct method of measuring distances. There are other ways to get distances, but they all depend on calibration of the parallax to get them. So this is the direct way. Now, how do we measure that? Well, we look at the positioning of a star at two different from two different perspectives. Well, the biggest perspective we can get is the two sides of Earth's orbit. So if we go from one side of Earth's orbit Six months later, we're on the other side of Earth's orbit. We are talking about uh, close to 300 million kilometers of distance. Now, of course, that's far bigger than we could just do on Earth. And even that baseline makes it very difficult to measure parallaxes. And what this gave us was distances to thousands of stars and gave us a way to understand the motions of stars within the Milky Way galaxy. Now you see we can detect velocities relatively easily. That's what we use called the Doppler shift. That allows us to determine parts at least a part of the velocity of any stars. But to really know what's going on we also need to know the distances. We need to know what stars are nearer and what stars are farther away. So this catalog was one of the first things that helped with that and something that the Gaia satellite is now expanding upon and measuring distances to far more stars. One of the other things that she did was discover variability in a quasar. So the quasar 3C273, which was uh, one of the first quasars discovered and is pictured right here. And we see that here a quasar just looks like a star. But in this case, it's an unusual star with this jet coming out of it. Now, that's because it really isn't a star. And we had learned that these are actually the cores of distant galaxies. And the variability of these quasars tells us something about how small the energy source has to be at the center of that galaxy. So this is one of the things that tells us that the center of a galaxy has a supermassive black hole at the center, because that's the only way to get variability on very short time frames. Now, she was also the uh, director for two decades of the Maria Mitchell Observatory. And you may recall we discussed Maria Mitchell earlier in a previous lecture. But from 1957 to 1978, she was the director of the observatory and did a lot of outreach to encourage interest in astronomy uh, among everyone, but especially among young women. So let's go ahead and finish up here with our summary. And what we've looked at is that Dorit Hoflite, born in Massachusetts in 1907 and worked on the Yale Bright Star Catalog and the general catalog of trigonometric parallaxes and was the director of the Maria Mitchell Observatory for over two decades. So that concludes this discussion on Dorit Hoflite. We'll be back again next week to discuss another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.